Thank you. Good morning. Welcome. Just want to talk a little bit about uh, what's been happening since yesterday. The, the investigation is ongoing. Um, as we develop anything of importance, we'll certainly make all of you aware of it. Um, but at this point, uh, we've only uh, determined that there's going to be one shooter involved in this incident, and that shooter is deceased. So I know that there's some stuff out there in the media talking about a potential second shooter. Uh, we have nothing that can uh, validate that being the case. Um, secondly, I'd like to give you a little better representation of the uh, suspect's mother and family. Um, she has been fully cooperative. Uh, she is heartbroken for the families of this incident, for the school uh, and the alumni. Um, she, someone had, from our department had interviewed her yesterday and spoke to the adult daughter. Um, they have been working with mental health institutions in the local area. Um, they've hooked him up with a, a medical, uh, a professional uh, mental health provider. Um, they've been supportive of, of him. Uh, whenever they noticed him kind of stepping out of line or going out of turn, they always worked to try and get him uh, back on his medication or back into therapy or whatever it is that he needed. Um, but I just want to make sure that the community is aware that the family is fully cooperative. They're, they're also heartbroken over this incident. And in the impression that I get from the investigator who spoke to the mother is that they've done everything that they could possibly have done, uh, but sometimes that's not enough. Um, you know, mental health is a terrible thing, and we, we can't anticipate what will come, but uh, the family peers have done everything that they could have possibly done to try to help this young man uh, live with his mental health issues. Um, finally, I, I'd like to thank, uh, you know, the members of the community, you know, the, the students. Um, I don't know if you've had teenagers or not, but uh, they don't always listen. But uh, on Monday, they sure did. Um, they did what their teachers instructed them to do. They did what the officers instructed them to do, uh, despite the fact that you could see that many of them were traumatized. You could see it in their faces and you could read it in their eyes. But uh, they did whatever was asked of them, and I'm deeply appreciative of the students and staff and, and the heroism that they exhibited on Monday. Um, but there's also some businesses in, in the area that really stepped up, uh, notably Schnucks. Um, it's not every day where you've got a grocery store operating and five or 600 kids come running up onto your parking lot looking for safety and another 60 or 80 uh, adults who are associated with them. Uh, but they were very gracious. They hosted the kids. Uh, they facilitated the movement of uh, dozens of buses that move those kids to a separate location. After that, our command post set up on that lot. Um, Schnooks was very gracious. They provided food and water. Uh, I was told one of the uh, employees actually carried a couple cases from the Schnooks location all the way down to the school where our officers were at. Uh, and many of our officers were in need of water because when they show up at a scene like this, they're not taking time to find a bottle of water to have with them at their side. So, you know, I appreciate what Schnooks did for us. Also, uh, the Salvation Army showed up to provide food and water for the first responders. Um, the Shamrock Bottling Company was very supportive as well for our command posts and allowed our officers to use their facilities. Uh, and lastly, uh, interface construction. Uh, as I was going up the arsenal to the scene, I, I could hear officers on the radio saying, we need breaching tools, we can't get into the, some of these rooms. And uh, sure enough, here on my right, there's a construction site with the workers standing there, helmets on and vests on. And I just asked them, hey, do you guys have any tools we can use to break into doors? And they <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and several workers went gathered up an armful of tools and gave them to our officers. So something as simple and mundane as some tools can mean the, the difference between the life and death of a child or a parent inside that building. So it may not seem like a lot, but it was a powerful gesture. Uh, so I appreciate uh, those workers who, who provided us with those critical tools needed at that time. But uh, so I, I really appreciate the efforts of the community who, who worked closely with us and supported us during that, that difficult day. Um, I don't, I'd like to introduce now uh, the special agent in charge of the St. Louis field office of the FBI, uh, Mr. Jay Greenberg. Thank you, Chief. 
So I want to talk very quickly about the increase that we've seen in hoax threats for additional or follow-on school shootings. We have seen this, unfortunately, nationwide since Columbine happened in 1999, that after a school shooting, we do see a rise in hoax threats in an area where we've had a school shooting. That has happened here. Really want to talk about this from a wellness perspective, however. These hoax threats that uh, come from the area are very easy to investigate, and we generally find the people very quickly who have made the hoax threats. Because of the volume, however, in the threats that we have seen over the last several days, your students who are in school across the metro region are seeing an increase in police presence in each one of their schools. The volume has been so great that we're not able to get out and identify and make contact with every single person who has made a hoax threat at this time. So the easiest way for us to address that as a law enforcement group across the metro area is simply for all the local police departments to assign armed resources to be in the school. So as parents, you should be aware that means that as your children are trying to process what has happened here uh, on Monday in the school shooting, they are also seeing an increased armed presence every day in their school, regardless where they are across the metro reason, region, which is leading to additional trauma for those students. We also had a school go on lockdown due to one of the threats on Tuesday. Again, that's more trauma for our kids. So we want to make sure that parents are aware that these, these are hoax threats. We do not believe there are any credible threats ongoing in the area that we are currently tracking. There is an increase in armed law enforcement in schools across the metro area, which is straining already strained police resources. So if you have a child who has a smartphone and they are hearing about a hoax threat or you know contemplating a hoax threat, as parents were asking you, make contact with your children, make sure they know that is illegal, it is a crime, we will investigate it, we will be coming to visit you at home through some level of law enforcement to run those threats to ground, but it is increasing the trauma that all of our students and teachers are experiencing. And so we ask for everybody's help here to make sure that we get these hoax threats ramped down so that law enforcement can do the job we need to and we can continue to get the services out to all the victims of this and to the broader community. So thank you very much. And now I'll hand it off to Mayor Jones. Thank you. The past two days have been a whirlwind for all of us. And as I've heard from students and community members and witnessed firsthand the devastating ripple effect this has had on our communities, I've grown from sad to angry. I'm angry because in the hours that followed this incident, several politicians who will remain nameless decided to use the pain of our community to score points or to energize their base. We should be using this as a time to wrap our arms around our children, our babies, who by no fault of their own went to school Monday morning to learn and will be traumatized for the rest of their lives. I'm angry because if we, as we watch mass shootings sweep across the country, Uvalde, Buffalo, Island Park, it seemed like only a matter of time to parents before it hit closer to home. And tragically, that happened Monday. That's what happens when the people with the power to take action to get guns off our streets and protect our children refuse to do so. I'm angry because as I have remained laser focused to transform public safety in this region, making St. Louis a safer place for families, including my son, people are using St. Louis as a political talking point. The time for thoughts and prayers are over. It's time for action. But the actions of the Missouri legislature in recent years have made gun violence far more likely to occur in our city and state. Whether it's dismantling the permitting process, passing a nullification law that makes it harder for local law enforcement to do its job, or by failing to take action to empower loved ones to temporarily remove firearms from a person in crisis, at risk of harming themselves or others. And now, their inaction in the face of senseless violence is leaving communi communities across our region feeling powerless. As co-chair of Mayors Against L Illegal Guns, I'm working with fellow mayors across the country to try and hold gun manufacturers accountable. If we can regulate a product as dangerous as tobacco, we can regulate weapons of war. 
If you have to register your car, you should have to do the same for a weapon that can injure and kill. If the state won't act, we need federal action to keep our babies safe. The Bipartisan Safety Act passed earlier this year is a good first step by encouraging states to enforce red flag laws, but there, it's just a first step and there's so much more work to do. And it was so encouraging to see so many senators, including our own Senator Roy Blunt, cross the aisle to vote in favor of common sense gun safety laws. We can do it again. I echo the White House's call to renew the assault weapons ban and urge the Senate to take action. No one can watch what happened here in our city this week or anywhere in the country and think that doing nothing is working. In St. Louis this year, more than 100 children have been victims of gun violence. And as a mother, their, their pain and that of their families breaks my heart. And everyone here today understands how the trauma of gun violence ripples across our communities, our neighborhoods, and our schools. But though I'm angry, I'm also proud of the way that our city has come together to support our students and staff. Every year, St. Louis earns the distinction of being one of the most charitable cities in the country. And witnessing the collaborative efforts that our chief talked about and the, the collaborative efforts among city departments and organizational partners, the grassroots efforts from our Congresswoman Cori Bush, and the sheer outpouring of support from community members has given me hope that our city will rise again. I hope that our leaders at the state and federal levels of government take note. In St. Louis, we know how to mobilize. I'm proud of our city for always putting in the work. And now I'd like to turn the mic over to Congresswoman Cori Bush. Good morning. Thank you to Mayor Jones uh, for convening us and um, for our community leaders being here as well. So Monday was a day that every parent, um, every student, every community, community member, um, praise never comes. It is unacceptable and beyond heartbreaking that school shootings have become so ingrained into our society, into our media coverage, and into our everyday lives. That every person in this country knows deep down that our schools are targets, but should never be targets for gun violence. We can't let this keep happening across our country. These are our students. These are our families, our children, our babies. Schools are supposed to be safe haven, a safe haven for children and parents, educators, custodial workers and cafeteria staff, a safe haven for our communities. I remember my own children going to school and it gave me peace going to work every day knowing that my children were at school and I believed them to be safe. But the reality is that our children, our educators, the staff are not. Our country has already broken the record for school shootings in this country, and we still have over 90 days left in this year. Gun violence is the leading cause of death for children and teens. You know, and we say enough is enough, but we were past enough. Enough, would have been, enough was one, and that happened long ago. We are undergoing a gun violence epidemic it is totally preventable. It is a preventable public health crisis. Republican lawmakers, especially, we need you to step up. We need you to join us in taking action on this gun violence crisis in this country. And if it means stepping away from the dollars you receive, you need to do so. I was glad to see President Biden reiterate his call for a ban on assault weapons yesterday. A ban on assault weapons would save lives. And the truth of the matter is that it may have saved the lives of those who were killed this Monday and protected those who were injured and those who were, who were traumatized. The House passed a ban on assault weapons. We did that back in July. And the Senate needs to act. And like our mayor said, the Bipartisan Safer Communities Law that passed earlier this year, it is a good first step. But it's just the tip of the iceberg of what we actually need in this country. 
My team and I, we are working relentlessly to introduce and advance gun reform policies rooted in public health to protect and address the needs of our community and communities alike. Just last month, Congressman Jamal Bowman, who will be here on tomorrow with us, who is the vice chair of the, education, the Committee on Education and, um, and Labor, we sent a letter to the Department of Health and Human Services, to the Department of Justice, and to the Department of Education, asking them to conduct a review of gun violence prevention strategies that they are utilizing in schools and establish a comprehensive plan to meet the holistic, emotional, health, and safety needs of our nation's students. I introduced the Helping Families Heal Act alongside Leslie McSpadden, who is Michael Brown's mother, to fund mental health resources for families, communities, and students who have been traumatized by violence. I also introduced the People's Response Act, which would adopt a new approach to public safety that understands that true public safety must be rooted in a public health response. Tomorrow, I am hosting a town hall on school safety tomorrow, October 27th at 6 p.m. at St. Louis Community College, uh, College Florissant Valley. This town hall is open to the public. It will provide an opportunity for community members to come together and hear from students. We have a panel. Hear from school admi administration officials, as well as mental health experts, therapists, elected leaders, and more and those who offer resources such as many of our community advocates and organizations. And you will have the opportunity to ask questions. I hope to see as many of you there, as many people as possible, bring your voices, um, come out tomorrow so we can talk and begin to heal together as we try to move forward from this tragedy. Um, as a side note, if you are in need of transportation, there will be transportation provided. We're still working on more, but there will be buses provided by People's Health Center starting at 5 p.m. at the Schnucks Grocery Store on 5055 Arsenal Street. Thank you to Schnucks and thank you to People's Health Center. And there will also be van transit provided by Metro Transit that will be available at the North Hanley Metro Station, uh, which is at 4398 Hanley Road. We are also working on more, so if you are someone who has the ability to be able to transport people, if you are a company and you are willing to do that, please reach out to our office. If you would like transportation, please call our office at 314-955-9980. Overall, bills and actions like these are how we save lives. I'm here to assure you, gun violence prevention has remained and will continue to be at the forefront of my legislative efforts. St. Louis has had enough. We're beyond enough. Together, we will push for the change we need to see to end the crisis of gun violence in our schools. We will not rest until we see a day where there is an end to mass gun violence and gun violence as a whole. And now I will turn it over to our incredible city health director, Dr. Madi Davis. Good morning. Gun violence is a public health crisis. Behavioral health and mental health are not only basic human rights, but fundamental tenets of health and public health. I understand that these last days have been deeply traumatic, not only for me, but for our entire community. It's just so challenging to try to even make sense of why when such tragedies occur, they do. My entire heart is with the families and friends of the two victims, 15-year-old Alexandria Bell and teacher Jean Kukska, and everyone, the entire family and community that surrounds, is embedded within, and encompasses Central Visual Performing Arts High School. Yesterday, the Department of Health and Office of Violence Prevention convened a meeting with leadership from the St. Louis Public Schools, St. Louis Metropolitan Department, local and state officials, behavioral health programs, and many more community leaders. Community leaders that have been doing this work within our communities for decades, day in and day out. At that meeting, we debriefed about this tragic event. We shared updates and discussed openly the realities of where we are today as it relates to violence. 
As a result, we were able to identify tangible goals that will allow us to collaboratively, collaboratively deliver the necessary resources to support victims, families, and our community. If you'll allow me to, I'll walk you through those, 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 um, those steps. Number one, to provide an equitable, community-wide response to all the recent gun violence. Because understand that while this tragedy is a tragedy, the day before, there were eight deaths due to gun violence the day before. And this has created an acute on chronic crisis and trauma for our city. Number two, we will focus on two core areas, including an improvement of both school-based and community-wide behavioral health interventions that are inclusive and data-driven. We have a network of over 35 distinguished behavioral health leaders that have been committed to serving the city for decades that will be meeting daily to collectively develop a set of short-term, medium-term, and long-term goals to serve this, uh, I'm sorry, with an action plan for community-based care that is equitable and aims to reduce any disparities in care. Number four, the Department of Health and Office of Violence Prevention will lead a bi-weekly meeting to create an action plan that will improve long-term school-focused behavioral health interventions. And last but certainly not least, the Department of Health has committed to providing centralized and coordinated communication, education, mapping of data, to support these forthcoming initiatives. Establishing any supportive resources or interventions related to mental health is not a solution, but rather are tools for healing from trauma that our community experiences as a result of incidents related to gun violence. Gun violence is a complex public health concern that requires the kind of collaborative effort that we hope to achieve. This meeting yesterday, provided an opportunity to reevaluate how gun violence is a public health emergency and how we should not be working in silos. Alone, we can achieve very little, but together we can effectively impact the kind of unprecedented change that is needed. It must be said, and I will say it, that prior to Mayor Jones taking her leadership position for our city, there was no Office for Violence Prevention. And it was through her efforts that I was empowered to open the first Behavioral Health Bureau for the City of St. Louis. Without those two distinct implementation strategies, we would not be able to lead and to act in the way that we have today. Lastly, I would like to say to everyone in our community, it's okay to be not okay. I'm not okay. I've been hugging my babies tight every night. I intentionally pray over them when I send them into school because my acute and chronic trauma has me fearful that it'll be the call that I get on my cell phone or that my husband gets. So it is okay to not be okay. However, if you or anyone you know needs help, please reach out and talk to someone. You are not alone. Our partner, the BHR Hotline, provides confidential counseling to anyone in need and is available 24-7. The number is 314-469-6644. And if that's too much to remember, just dial 988. 988 and help will come your way. Gun violence is a public health crisis. Behavioral and mental health are essential human rights and foundational principles of health and public health. I would now like to turn it over to Halliday Douglas from St. Louis Public Schools. Thank you. The role of the St. Louis Public School Foundation, which is the entity I represent, uh, we are the trusted uh, partner uh, for St. Louis Public Schools and leveraging community resources, community dollars uh, to support gap uh, funding uh, on initiatives in the, in the district, but we also are there to support um, strategic innovations. Our priorities are uh, post-secondary opportunity, which includes early childhood education, 
uh, health and well-being, and teacher capacity building. Monday was exceedingly unfortunate and tragic, and it, it shook everyone in St. Louis, uh, and particularly the families um, of those who um, were lost, and the families at Collegiate School of Medicine and Bioscience and, and um, Central Visual Performing Arts High Schools, which are both co-located uh, co on the same campus. In the last 48 hours, the foundation has uh, spent a number of hours and uh, really focused on queuing up uh, mental health resources, um, and particularly uh, practitioners. Uh, so that when the district needs them, they're ready. We've also been in conversation with several business leaders uh, and philanthropic leaders in the area who have expressed um, care and concern and offered um, whatever they can do to support. Our job, again, has been to uh, raise those dollars, hold those dollars, and invest them um, in district-specified need areas. Um, our priority right now, obviously, is uh, creating resources and support uh, to help the, the families and the schools um, directly around uh, Monday's tragedy. Long term, uh, we, are, we have a health and well-being priority. And so, you know, while we are foot soldiers for the district, and the now, just really trying to make sure we are ready and primed uh, when we are needed and how we're needed. Uh, we are also uh, making sure we are ready and primed to actually address an issue that's been going on in St. Louis for uh, quite some time. Uh, Monday's events were symptomatic of this larger crisis of health and well-being. Um, and what we wouldn't want people to lose sight of is the fact that issues like Monday, um, they're connected to a greater picture, that the community needs to come together and must come together um, to support. And, and what's been amazing is in the last 48 hours, uh, we've received more calls, more emails, uh, and more gifts um, just trying to problem solve, not just around the acute issue, uh, what's been amazing is that people do understand that this is part of a greater context that needs to be addressed. Um, we have um, uh, welcomed donations to date uh, to that health and well-being uh, uh, priority area, uh, obviously with the priority going towards the schools most impacted, and then the other uh, portion of that going towards sustainability. Um, people who wish to give can give using the uh, uh, foundation's website, uh, slpsfoundation.org. Uh, I have uh, just been briefed that we are experiencing some technical difficulties due to traffic and some uh, browser challenges, uh, but I've also been assured that those uh, will be uh, resolved by day's end. Um, I just want to, you know, as a child that's attended St. Louis Public Schools. Um, as a former educator in St. Louis Public Schools, um, and as someone who, uh, you know, just believes in the world of, of, of Dr. Adams and his leadership, um, the district uh, leaders that he's charged to really problem solve are doing their very best to address this. Um, their first priority has been on triaging and containment and making sure they're managing crisis. Um, they are now assessing needs on an ongoing basis, and as we know more, we will get more specific about what the individual needs are. But I, I know the district, um, and obviously the St. Louis Public Schools Foundation is, is just very grateful for, for the support, um, and, and we really do, do hope it continues um, in perpetuity. Thank you.